All right. So talking about this, we have an example here. This is planning. As an, as an enlisted personnel, you get told, hey, we're going to do this. You're going to go here. This is what's going on. All right, do it. As an officer, you have to look at the whole situation. You have to plan it out. We have things we call op orders, operation orders. You get to learn how to write a five-paragraph operations order. And you will write a five-paragraph operations order for every single thing you do. You get really good at them after a while. But it teaches you to plan. It teaches you to make sure you're getting all the details. Land navigation. Hey, even if you're not on foot, you still have to know how to get from here to there. It plays in. Even when I go to flight school, I'll talk about it later, we still had a land navigation portion. You still need to know how to read a map, how to know where you are, how to know how to read the train to figure out what's the best place to set up, etc. Some of the training. These are what I like to call nice field quarters. You're in a tent, you have cops, but sometimes you're literally out wrapped in a poncho under a bush. You're still doing obstacles. As an officer, you lead from the front. And you have to be an officer to become a pilot. You lead from the front, which means you need to be able to do every single thing. You need to be able, willing to do every single thing you're going to ask one of your soldiers to do. And again, back to teamwork. Hey, look, we got to get everybody over this wall. Just because one person may be able to jump up, grab the top, and pull themselves over, we still got to get every single other person over that wall. So, finished OCS, and I had a couple other schools that I had to go to after that. There's basic officer leadership school. But I finished OCS, and when you go to OCS, you get asked, well, what branch would you like to be in? It's not, what branch are we going to put you in? It's, hey, put in your request for your top three branches. I said, aviation, because I wanted to fly, medical service corps, because I still wanted to do medevac, and I think it was human resources for my last one, because I figured I already had some experience in that. But really, I was pushing for the aviation. So we finished flight school, or we finished OCS. I had started in a class, of, and to tell you how OCS breaks people down, I started in a class of 16. We ended up with three when we graduated. Both of the boys in the class got branched field artillery, not what they wanted. I, however, got aviation. Yay, I win. Um, so, branched aviation, but that doesn't mean, hey, you're automatically on your way to flight school. You have to still go before what we call a flight board, where you go before a board of aviators, and they ask you questions. They're going to try to make figure out, who are we going to send to flight school first? Who's going to be our best asset in this, this situation? So went before the board, and when I went to the board, they said, hey, we have your branched aviation right now. Do you want to go back to med service and, and be a medevac pilot? And I went, yes. <laughs> so did a branch transfer, but what that meant is I also had to go to medical service corps school. So I actually went through two officer advanced courses. Went through a med service corps school at Fort Sam Houston. And I also went to flight school at Fort Rucker, Alabama, which is what we're going to talk about now because you're all here to hear about flying, right? All right. So flight school is broken down into a bunch of different things. You have primary. This is when you learn your basic principles of flying. You're flying the TH-67, which is a small, I'll show you a picture of it. It's a small little, we, we like to make fun of it and say it has like a lawnmower engine in it. Smaller than a Huey. You learn how to hover. Hovering is what is the difference between a helicopter pilot and an airplane pilot. You can teach a monkey to fly an airplane. Because you know why? You know why? Airplanes want to stay in the sky. They want to glide. Helicopters want to fall out of the sky like a rock. It's the truth. It's the truth. They do. They want to fall out of the sky. It, it's like a bumblebee. Bumblebees shouldn't fly. Doesn't make sense. And you learn instrument flying, which is usually when we fly, we fly on a nice day like it is today. And you're looking outside your cockpit and you're looking and you're going, okay, I can see where the horizon is. I can see where I'm going. I'm using visual cues outside to get where I'm going and make sure I'm level and straight and how high I am, that I'm avoiding all the obstacles. 
Well, sometimes the weather isn't so nice and we still have to get places, so we learn what we call instrument flying. There's navigational aids that you have to learn about, and you learn about focusing inside your cockpit, looking at your instruments, and really using those to keep control of your aircraft. And we have BWS, basic warfighting skills. Because, wait, we're in the Army. You need to learn how to fly low, how to use trees and other objects for cover, how to follow terrain, how to find people, how to land in a small field, things like that. Then we move to our advanced airframe. And you notice I have penguins on an iceberg. I'm sure some of you are looking at that going, why would you have penguins on an iceberg? When I got to my advanced airframe, we started learning about it, and there was a guy who was teaching us some of the processes, and he went, your brain is like an iceberg. It's only so big. You have so much information that you have to keep. And those are the information you have to keep, that's like penguins. Now, you can only keep so much information on there, and then some of the penguins fall off. Like, think about what the things that you learned in school. Do you remember what year so-and-so was the president, or what year some battle happened? You might have known it when you were in school because you were expected to know it then. But that's falling off your iceberg right now, right? Now, what happens when you get all this information is you have penguins that fall off the iceberg, and the thing you have to do is you have to try to make sure it's non-important stuff that falls off the iceberg. <laughs> a lot of people lose basic math skills, the ability to do basic addition, subtraction, but I thought you guys enjoy that. And we also start learning about night flying. So, helicopter pilots, because fighter pilots need heroes too. It's the truth. So, Fort Rucker, Alabama is the U.S. Army Aviation Center. It's also called the home of Army Aviation. It used to be years ago that there were multiple different places that they would send pilots to fly. This is where everyone in the Army goes to learn how to fly helicopters now, and actually fixed-wing airplane as well. Did you know the Army had fixed-wing planes? We do. Don't have as many as the Air Force, but we have more helicopters than they do. Now, most branches of service when they're teaching pilots, teach pilots on a fixed-wing airframe first. And then we'll move them into a helicopter. The Army is the only branch of service that starts people out straight with a helicopter. One of the first things you have to learn is dunker. Dunker training. Now, when you have a helicopter, you have to be able to handle emergencies, right? Well, one of the emergencies you might run into is if you have to put the helicopter down in the water. Call it putting it down in the drink. Now if you do that, you're going to hover or auto-rotate, put it down in the water, you're going to let the aircraft sink into the water because you have these whirling blades over your head so you can't just jump out and swim away because getting hit by those would be bad. You have to let the helicopter sink and then once it rolls over that stops the blades, then you can get out of the helicopter. Dunker training is to teach you how to do that and is a mandatory course for Army aviators. You also study a lot before you ever touch an aircraft. You have to learn emergency procedures and limits for whatever aircraft you're in. You have to learn the startup procedures. You have to learn how the aircraft works. You need to understand how the engine's connected, how the fuel works, so that if there is an emergency, you understand the process. And I actually have some of my study materials up here that you guys can look at afterwards. So, primary. That is a TH-67. That is actually one of the training birds down at Fort Rucker, hovering over a field. Now, I told you hovering is an interesting thing, right? Understanding your flight controls. You have a cyclic. That is the stick that when you look in a cockpit is right in between your legs. Your cyclic allows you to control your pitch forward and back, side to side. Your collective, which is next to you with your left hand, controls your up and down. You have pedals for your feet. This controls what we call a yaw, side to side. Now, when you're hovering, you're trying to stay in one spot, right? What you have to understand is, when you move the cyclic, it means you have to make an adjustment to your collective and your pedals. If you move your pedals, you have to adjust your collective and your cyclic, because they all affect each other. So, learning to hover. 
Unfortunately, I don't have an internet connection or I would show you a picture, a video of someone learning how to hover. What happens is you, you get to primary, you get assigned an instructor pilot, an IP. And that instructor pilot gets two students per pilot for an IP. And they take you on your first ride and they take off. And you're riding, they let you fly the controls a little bit on your way out to what we call a stage field. And you get out to your stage field and they drop one of the students off and they take the other one out. And the IP starts with all the controls. And he's hovering it and the aircraft is sitting like that. Just hovering right there. No problem. Looks easy, right? And then they go, okay, now you take the controls and you try it. And you're watching from the stage field. You watch the aircraft is sitting like this and you watch it start going like this. And like this. And like this. And then all of a sudden it goes, because the IP just took the controls again. And then the IP goes, okay, how about this? How about this? How about you just take the cyclic? I'll still keep the pedals in the collective. Okay, so then it's just like this. And they're like, okay, so you're doing all right. So now take the cyclic and the collective. It starts to wobble more. It usually takes people 10 to 20 hours just to learn how to hover. This is why not everyone can fly a helicopter. Because some people just never quite get the coordination. Everybody get an idea how the flight controls work now? So, you learn your primary. Primary is, hey, how do I fly a traffic pattern? How do I go around the airfield and make it look pretty, stay at the altitudes I'm supposed to be at, look out? It's not so bad. And you're like, you get through primary and you're like, you get through your first part of primary and you're like, I'm doing pretty good. I can fly a traffic pattern. I can fly at, you know, 90 knots and I can take off to 700 feet and keep a nice square pattern. And you learn some of your emergency procedures. You learn how to auto-rotate and slide down the runway and do roll-on landings and all those fun things. And then they go, now you're going to learn instrument flying. And they put you in one of these. These are simulators. This is what the inside of a simulator, this is actually a Blackhawk simulator picture, but you see that screen there? That's what we like to call the red screen of death. <laughs> That's when you crash it or do something outside of the limits. Now what you do when you're in here is you're going to focus on your controls. They give you a blanked out screen. And they can program things into the simulator, and these simulators move. So they can give you turbulence, or they can... So you start in the simulator, and they go, okay, we're going to concentrate on what we call BI, basic instruments. Let's keep it level, at the airspeed you want to go, at the altitude you want to be at, and you start to get that, and then they go, now you got to learn holding. 